When radioactive materials decay, they release energy in the form of decay particles and often gamma rays. These gamma rays are of concern primarily as they can travel a large distance from the source. The energy carried by the gamma rays spread out from the source in all directions and lose energy as they travel due to absorption in the medium through which they are travelling. If a small region is considered, it is obvious that for each source decay an amount of energy is absorbed by the region, giving it a dose. As decay is a continuous phenomenon, this volume will receive energy continuously so that the accumulated energy absorbed, or the accumulated dose, will depend on the time spent near the source. As we know the number of decays per unit time, or the activity of the source, we can work out the rate of dose accumulation. There is a spectrum of methods available to calculate the dose rate from a gamma source, ranging from guiding approximations through to complex computer simulations. An example guiding approximation is this form, which calculates the dose rate based on the activity of the source, the energy of the gamma rays produced, the fraction of decays that produce gamma rays of the given energy, the inverse square of the distance, and a constant, in this case one-sixth. The constant is often referred to as the gamma ray constant. While the definition of dose rate seems simple enough, there are subtleties that must be appreciated if any form of calculation is to produce a meaningful result. Two simple questions are, what is actually getting the dose, and where exactly is it located? To answer these questions, consider the path of gamma rays from a point source to a region of interest. As the photons travel, they spread out and some of their energy is absorbed, so that by the time they reach the region of interest, the number passing through the unit area per unit time is reduced by an inverse square law and an exponential reduction law. Also note that the photons are still diverging from the source, which must be accounted for as not all the photons will travel the full distance through the constructed unit cube in the region of interest. This is correctly accounted for by calculating the energy absorbed per unit volume in a spherical volume shell of unit thickness and dividing by the volume of the shell. The region of interest may be air, or another material if the appropriate absorption coefficient is used. Many calculations assume this region to be air, so a correction is required to give the dose to another material, say human tissue. The absorption of gamma energy in a material is determined by the material's mass energy absorption coefficient, which typically has units of per meter or per centimeter. This gives the fraction of energy remaining after traveling a given distance by a simple exponential law. The complementary value gives the amount of energy absorbed. Mass energy absorption coefficients vary greatly from material to material. Typically, low density gases have low values, while more dense liquids and solids have higher values. As the absorption is related to the amount of matter present, the coefficients may be divided by the material density to obtain values per amount of matter present. These mass energy absorption coefficients have units of centimeter square per gram or meter square per kilogram and have values that are very similar over a range of materials. When these units are used, the distance should be modified by the density of the material. It should also be noted that the absorption values span a considerable range and are much higher for low energy gamma photons. Assuming the dose is to air, and comparing the results of an exact calculation with those obtained with a guiding approximation, it is seen that for gamma energies above about 60 keV, the approximation gives a conservative estimate of the dose rate for a range of distances. For low energies, the approximations used to derive the guiding value expression break down and an underprediction is made. Comparing results with typical computer codes also shows a large difference, especially close to the source. Is the computer calculation in error then? No, many computer codes have a subtle difference in the definition of the distance to the measured point of interest. In the previous case, a distance to the beginning of a region of interest was used, as might be expected if measuring a distance from a source to a person. However, some codes calculate the dose rate at a position that is at the center of a unit region of interest, which means the unit volume is slightly closer to the source and so a higher dose rate is predicted. Correcting for this difference in definition shows that the results are correct for their definition of distance. Comparing these results with the guidance approximation shows that the shape of the curve fits better using a definition of distance that is related to the center of a volume rather than the edge of a volume.
However, when using volume center distances, care must be taken when the gamma ray passes through one medium, say air, and the dose rate in a second medium, say tissue, is required as this definition of distance blurs the boundary between the two absorbing media.